Giza Direct here with Brian Forrester. Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself and what brings you to Egypt. Well, my name is Brian Forrester. I've been fascinated by ancient mysteries since I was a very young boy. Uh, I've had a fascination with Egypt, again, since I was very young, but I never, I never thought to come because it's such a huge distance from Vancouver and expensive. But uh, six years ago, Stephen Mailer and the Kemet School invited me to come. And uh, that was my first trip here. And the reason they brought me is because I'd spent significant time in Peru and Bolivia looking at megalithic work. So they wanted me to compare what I had experienced in Peru and Bolivia with, uh, with what's here. And I was just in complete shock with the sheer scale of, uh, of what is here as regards the me megalithic works. And it appeared very obvious from the very beginning that the dynastic Egyptians did not have the engineering capability of moving these giant stone blocks we see right here. Uh, they just, it didn't matter how many thousand men or people they would employ, the scale is too big. The distances from which some of the stone was brought, for example, Aswan, which is 500 miles away, it's just they did not have the capability. That they, there are theories that ships were built out of Lebanon's um, cedars in order to create giant barges uh, to carry some of these stones down the river, but you would have to defoliate all of Lebanon to do that in one go. And then you have to move the wood from Lebanon, which is a thousand miles away. So the engineering, it just doesn't work. So obviously what we're looking at here is we're looking at two great cultures. You have the dynastic people, whose work basically started 5,000 years ago. But when they first entered this land, they discovered the megalithic works damaged from some massive cataclysm. They were in awe, and then they built their temples and things here, um, out of adoration for those that had come before. Some people call the original people the Kemetians, because Kemet means the black land, describing visually this landscape. Um, some people believe they were aliens. I, I don't know. All I do know is that this is my sixth trip here. I will be coming here every spring in order to be with Patricia and Yusuf to explore more and more because, again, this is my sixth trip and what I've seen, uh, I've seen many, many things, especially nuances of these great structures that have me questioning more and more and more. What are your thoughts on the Serapium? The Serapium at, at Sakar is quite bizarre uh, because, of course, it was constructed underground. The boxes average 100 tons. In most cases, the lid and the box themselves are, or the li lid and the box are from one piece of stone. The quarry is likely, again, Aswan, which is hundreds of miles away, or the Eastern Desert, which is hundreds of miles away. There are no signs of any soot marks inside the tunnels, meaning they obviously had to use some form of artificial light in order to move these 100-ton boxes. You have six inches on either side of the tunnels, and uh, in order to turn them around the corner, uh, obviously this was done using very advanced lost ancient high technology. What the original function was, I don't know, but I do know no remains of uh, Apis bulls were found in the Serapium, so the idea that they were ceremonial funerary containers is completely ridiculous. Now that you've been in the Osiris shaft, what is your thoughts of that? Well, the, the Osiris shaft proves what Abdel Hakim Awian said for decades, and that is there is a tunnel and shaft system underneath the Giza Plateau that is very extensive. The reason why the Osiris shaft was likely off limits to visitors was not because it was dangerous to go down, it was da it's dangerous for the information it contains. Because again, you go one level down, which is probably 60 feet, then the next level has, I think, six side channels, in two of which are massive boxes weighing at least 50 tons of very hard stone. So you question, how did they get the boxes down the shaft? And then the third level has a huge box in it, which is underwater at this point. So what it's telling us again, lost ancient high technology was responsible for the construction of the Osiris shaft. Whoever came up with the name the Osiris shaft, I don't know, but uh, the dynastic Egyptians could not have created that. 
What is your favorite spot in Egypt? Uh, naming a favorite spot in Egypt is like naming your favorite child. I love them all, but the weirdest one, I would, or weirdest two, I would say, are the Osiris Shaft and the Serapium, and number three would be the Osirion as well. Those three absolutely phenomenal works of engineering and precision beyond the level of a Bronze Age civilization like the dynastic people of Egypt. And how can people find more of your work? Well, everything relating to me is at my website, hiddenincatours.com. 95% of what you'll find there is free because my role on this planet is to freely give what I experience as much as possible. The other 5% maintains my lifestyle. So 960 videos, I believe, are on there. Books, uh, also... Uh, ways that you can connect with the Kemet School. The Kemet School and Hidden Inca Tours are like this for the rest of our lives, I hope. Excellent. Well, thank you, Brian. And live Giza Direct is out. Thank you much. Thank you.